At this part of our probability, we want to look at the probability of events where we've seen the general formula for probability of event. But now we want to take the event one after the other, starting from the event of tossing a coin. From the beginning, in the introduction of probability, we emphasize on the fact that probability activities can be found in some games and also some acts in our daily lives. For example, tossing a coin is a probability event. When you toss a coin, you cannot be certain or you cannot be so sure about the appearance of the coin or the particular part of the coin that will show. So from here, we are going to talk about a fair coin. Now, we should know that if a coin is fair or a coin is unbiased, a coin has two sides. That is a head and a tail. So there are two sides of a fair coin. That is a head and a tail. The head has a symbol H and the tail has a symbol T. So for a normal coin to be tossed once, when you toss a fair coin once, you either see the head or see the tail. So when you toss a fair coin once, you see the head or you see the tail. That shows that the number of sample space or the total number of occurrences should be two. Two because a head or a tail can be found or can be shown. So if that's the case, then we are saying two things can show. That is the head or the tail. That makes the sample space two. So now the possible outcomes will be head or tail. That means that whoever tosses a coin could see the head or could see the tail if the person tosses the coin once. Now let's take a look at this. If the probability of tossing a coin to see the head, you want the probability of tossing a coin once and you see the head, then the head will show once. So it will be one appearance divided by the two sample space. The probability of tossing a coin once and then the event shows head will be one over two. The same thing happens to the tail. If you toss a coin once and the probability that you show a tail also become one out of two. That is the meaning. So it is either ways. It's either you see a head or you see a tail. That is how it is like. So let us continue and toss a coin twice. Now let's toss a fair coin twice. If you toss a fair coin twice, this are going to be the possible outcome. We can tabulate the possible outcome. Every fair coin has two faces. That is the head and the tail. So my first coin, my first coin has two faces. So that becomes the first coin. I'm putting it in the table for the outcomes to be easy to get. So if I have the first coin here, I also put second coin. Now, the second coin is also a single coin that if you toss it, you get two appearances or two possible outcomes, still being the head and the tail. Now, look at this. Let me combine them. When I toss the first coin, I'm seeing head, so head will come. Then I toss the second coin, still seeing head. So, this one means that the both coins can either give you head. So, it means both coins, the first one can also give you head, and the second one can also give you head. That is what it means. So if the first one gives you head, the second one can also give you head. That is why we call it head head. Meaning first toss or first point showed head. And then when you are allowed to toss again, you still got the head. That is the second point. Now here again, the first coin can give you a head and the second coin can give you a tail. That is what we call head tail. Also, the first coin can rather give you a tail and then the second coin will give you a head. Now look at this. The first coin can rather give you a tail, the second coin also tail. So that means the possible outcomes, possible outcomes will be head head, comma, head tail, comma, tail head, and then tail tail. Right from those ones on the table. Head head, that's the one here. Head tail, that's the one here. Tail head, and then the tail tail. Meaning that whoever tosses a fair coin twice, or also to say, two fair coins once. So if you toss a fair coin twice and then you toss two fair coins once, you still get the same possible outcome. So whoever tosses a fair coin twice should be able to see one of these. So anyone who comes can see head head, meaning the first coin or the first toss will show head. The second coin or the second toss will also still show head. That is head head. If the person doesn't see head head, the person is likely to see head tail, meaning the first toss was a head and the second toss was a tail. Still, the person can also see tail head, meaning the first toss was a tail and then the second toss was a head. And the person finally can also see tail tail. Both toss could be tail, first tail, second tail. So that is why we are saying that anybody who tosses a fair coin twice or what, two fair coin once should be able to see these possible outcomes. So with this one, two, three, four possible outcomes, our sample space or the total number of possible outcomes should be four. And this is it. 
for tossing a fair coin twice or for tossing two fair coin once. Now let's take example questions on tossing a fair coin twice or two fair coin once. And this question reads, two coins are tossed. Find the probability of getting at most one head. Let's get the possible outcome first of all for the two coins because there's a probability question under tossing a fair coin. So it's an event probability question. Let's get the possible outcome. Now, as I've rightly taught you in the other video, you can draw a table to get your possible outcome. Now, the table is not a compulsory thing. The table is just a guideline for you to get the right possible outcome. So the first coin here at this part, and for a, a single coin, we'll get a head and a tail. That's why the head and the tail is there. Now, the next thing is that we take the second coin, and with the second coin, we can still get head and tail because it's a single coin. And when you toss a single coin, you can get the head or you can see the tail. So these are the two. Now let's combine them to form the possible outcome for tossing it twice. So H, H will give you head, head. Now head against tail will give you head, tail. Tail against head will give you tail, head. And then tail against tail will give you tail, tail. With this, we can now display the possible outcome for tossing a fair coin twice or two coins once. So this is for two coins once. So head, 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 tail, tail, head, and tail, tail. You already understand the meaning of this. So we have four different things that can occur. So the sample space will now become four. And the four are, is either the head shows throughout, a head and tail will show for the first toss and the second toss, a tail and a head will show for the first and second toss, and tail, tail for all the toss. Now let's see. Once we have this, the question now wants what we call at most one head. And I want you to understand this English. At most one head. This is a clause. Now, with this, you have to then know the meaning of at most one head. One meaning of at most one head is less than or equal to. Less than or equal to. So, less than or equal to one that is to say like this so it means that one and below one so another way is one one that is one or below one so one or below one so less than or equal to means one and below one that is to say less than or equal to one also means one or below one so it shouldn't be greater than one that is also another way it shouldn't be greater than one so we are looking at one head or no head that's the meaning one head or no head talking about one head or zero head no head means zero head so zero head zero head which also means no head. let's go here and look for those who qualify to be one head and also to be no head now here there are two heads so disqualified we want at most one head that is to say one head and less than one head or no head so we see that we see one head alone or we see no head in the two so the two one can be one head and the other will be a tail that's the meaning of one head and no head means all of them should be tail tail so whilst you are going you take note of it and this is two heads we don't need two heads because at most one the highest should be one now two is in that means disqualified means we've left one to two which is not possible so this is disqualified ht this is only one head even though there's a tail it doesn't matter it talked about head so the fact that there's a tail doesn't have anything to do with the question or the answer so head this one qualifies now there's head this one also qualifies. and now here there's no head meaning no head which means tail 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 means no head so three of them qualify so probability of at least at least one head okay will give us three of them qualifying divided by the total the total becomes four from the sample space the total is four so we get three over four as our answer so please this part take note of it and take your time at least one head means there should be one head and there should be no head we check here there are two heads so disqualify we check here one head so qualify we check here one head one tail still qualify because one head here there is no head that means two tails no head so this one is qualified so one two three for the number as the formula states that the number of whatever you are talking about must be up here 
divided by the total number, the total number is four. So this will be the final answer for the probability of at least one head. We get three over four. Thank you very much. Question reads, a fair coin is tossed twice. Write down the set of possible outcomes. What is the probability of obtaining I, exactly two heads, I, I, no heads, I, 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 at least one head, and then I, a head and a tail. Now, a fair coin is tossed twice. Since from the previous lessons, we've been able to see how we demonstrate the possible outcome for tossing a fair coin twice or tossing two fair coin ones. We have been able to know it. So let's just list it here. Now, we have head, 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 tail, tail, head, and tail, tail. So if you remember from the previous questions or the previous illustrations, these are the possible outcome for tossing a fair point twice or two fair points once. So it becomes the number of sample space is four. Now let's go straight to the question I. I states that probability of getting exactly two heads. Now exactly two heads with that one, we have the list. So exactly two heads, let's list it. So exactly two heads, you have just head, head. This is the only one with exactly two heads. That means the number for that exactly two heads will be equal to one so the probability of exactly two heads will be equal to one out of four meaning the number of exactly two heads divided by the total number as a formula so exactly two heads has only one person that is head head that one person is one one as a number comes up here the number of it not the particular thing but the number of the head head or exactly two heads then you divide it by the total number which is one two three four divided by the total number. Let's go to IR. It says no head. Now, if you want no head, it means we are talking about tail, tail. So no head is tail, tail. And then the number for no head, no head is equal to one. Only one entity or one outcome became no head. So the probability of no head, no head will then be equal to the number for the no head, which is one out of the total number which is four so that one also gives us one out of four now with the I, 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 it says at least one head so at least one head let's understand at least one head i have told you that anytime this at least or at most question comes under probability take your time to get a different minute now at least one head means the least should be one head that means that we are talking about greater than or equal to one so the thing should be equal to one and should still be greater than one. So it shouldn't be less than one. That is the meaning. So it should be greater than or equal to one. So greater than or equal to one. That's the meaning. That is one. Let's use one. Uh -huh. So greater than or equal to one. What does that mean? So it shouldn't be less than one. Not less than one. That is the meaning. It shouldn't be less than one. And so we are talking about one head or two heads or three heads if possible. So one head and above one head. So one head and above one head. So those who have one head qualifies to be at least one head. And those who have two heads also qualify to be at least one head. And if possible or if there are three heads, they also qualify four, five and so on. But all you need to know is as one and above one head. One head, above one head is two head. Three head is also above one head. So let us go and look for those ones. Let's see. So from the list, we have head, 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 tail, tail, head, and then tail, tail. So if you check head, head, yes, head, head qualifies because it's two heads. So you qualify. Head, tail, head, tail qualifies because there is one head. And then we said one head is part of at least one head. And two heads are part, that's why head head is qualified. Now, tail head is also qualified because there's one head there. But tail tail is not qualified. Do you know why? Because tail tail means no head. And here there is no head qualified here. You realize that it is one head, two heads, or three heads, which means at least one head. If you say no head, no head doesn't qualify for at least one head. So there will be three of them. The number will be three. Now let's see the probability. The probability of at least one head. At least one head. 
will be equal to how many of them forms at least one head? There are three. One, two, three. So three of them divided by what was the total number before they became three? They were four. So four of them. So the answer for probability of at least one head will be three over four. So please, these kind of questions, take your time and go through it. Now let's do the question V. So the V says a head and a tail. So a head and a tail. Now this one is too easy. How many of them has head and tail at the same time? So you can see that head, tail, and tail, head. They are the only two with a head and a tail. Head and a tail. Head, head has two heads and tail, tail has two heads. So they are disqualified. But these are the qualified and the number is two. So the probability of that, that is a head and a tail will be equal to how many are there? Two of them out of what? Four. And then two goes into someone into four, two. So we get one out of two as a final answer. So this becomes the final answer for this particular question. Now, let's go to the next stage where we see the event of tossing a fair coin three times or three fair coin once. Let's see that one. And this part, we want to take a look at tossing a fair coin three times or tossing a coin three times. Now, you took a look at tossing a coin twice and then with a the twice, the same structure will be for the three times, but just at this time around, there's another extra toss making it three. Now, let's see how this is done. You have to draw a table, just tabulate it so that you can get a possible outcome nicely. Now, let us put two toss or two coins. So, two coins here, and when you toss a fair coin twice, you have head head as a possible outcome here head tail, tail head, and then tail tail. So, this will be the possible outcome for tossing a fair coin twice. Then we have one added to make it three, and then this will be one coin. So with the one coin, then we are saying that head and tail will be the possible outcomes for the one coin. So one coin here and two coins are making three coins. So let's toss. You see that three coins will be head, 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 making it three different coins. So all the three showed head, that's the meaning. Head first, head second, and head third. And we go head, head, tail. We go head, tail, head, making this one head, tail, tail. And with tail here becomes tail head head tail yet then tail head tail tail yet tail head so tail tail head last one tail against two tails becoming tail 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 so this will be the possible outcome for tossing a fair point to be done let's write it down so that you see it well now head 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 tail head tail head head tail tail Tail, head, head. Tail, head, tail. And then tail, tail, head. Finally, tail, tail, tail. Now, how many are there? There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So the number of sample space will be eight. And don't forget, with each one of them, you have three tosses. So with the first one, you have toss, first toss getting head, second toss getting head, and then the third one getting head also. Then let's take something like this tail, head, tail. That means the first toss got tail. The second toss got head, and then the last or the third toss got tail. So you see, all of them are three three. Let's take this one here. Say head, tail, tail. First toss head, second toss tail, and then the final toss tail. So anyone who comes to toss a fair point three times must get one of these as a possible outcome for all the first, second, and third toss. Also, if you take three fair points and toss them once, you should still get one of these possible outcomes. So your sample space will be eight. Now, with the help of this, let us solve a question to illustrate how this is used when probability question is given under tossing a fair coin three times or three fair coin once. Now, in this question, it reads, a fair coin is tossed three times. Write down the set of possible outcomes. What is the probability of obtaining I, examining one head, I, I, no head, I, 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 at least two heads, I, mean, a head and a tail. Now, with this, we have to then know that the coin was tossed three times. So, a fair coin is tossed three times. Let's draw the table to help us with our possible outcome. So, the first coin. Let's make it two coins. So, two coins up here. So, two coins. And with two coins, we have head head as a first outcome, 
head tail as a second outcome, tail head as a third, and then tail tail as a fourth one. Then one coin. The one coin we have head and tail. So if you check one coin plus two coin gives us a three toss that they are talking about, three times toss. So here we have head, 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 tail, head, tail, head, head, tail, 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 head, head, tail, head, tail, 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 head, and then tail, tail, tail. So N of S is eight. So there are eight different outcomes. When the I it says exactly one head. Then if you want exactly one head, let's check the one that has exactly one head. And I want you to note something here. The fact that we are looking for exactly one head doesn't mean there will be no other ones. The head must just be one, but there will be two tails because three things are there. We have three things in each one of the boxes. So if three things are there, we want only one of them to be a head. So if you check here, there are three heads, so disqualified. This one is two heads disqualified. Two heads disqualified. One head. So we have head, tail, head for the arm. So we have this one two, two heads disqualified. One head. We have tail, head, tail. We have tail, tail, head. Yet no head, so disqualified. So we had one, two, three. The number was three. We have three of them. So for no head will come there. But this one is for exactly one head. So you have to know which one you want. Then for the eye, exactly one head. We have one head here with two tails. One head here with two tails and one head here with two. That means an S what we are looking for. Now how many are they? They are three. So the probability of one head will be equal to three out of eight. Three of them qualified. Out of the eight that's supposed to come, only three qualify. So then the probability will be three out of eight. Don't forget the top will be how many did you get from what you are looking for? And what is the total from what you want to select? That is how it is. So how many you are looking for will be at the numerator. I'm looking for head, one head, and then any other. So one head, we have three of them qualifying, and then eight of them were supposed to qualify, but only three ended up qualifying. Let's go to II. When II, we are talking about no head. And if it's no head, then the one that qualifies is tail, 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 and the number is just one of them. Because tail, tail, tail is the only outcome with no head. That is to say, three tails without a head. All the three were, were tails. The first toss was a tail, second toss was a tail, and then even the third toss was a tail. That makes it no head. So if you want a probability of no head, probability of no head, no head will be got only one outcome divided by eight of the outcomes. So one out of eight. Then I, I, I. I, 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 we are talking about at least two tails. So at least two tails now at least two tails means that the least should be two tails that means two and above two tails so less than or equal to it will not be the case but greater than or equal to so greater than or equal to will be the case for at least so greater than two that means equal to two is part and greater than two which is three four five if possible so at least two tails we are talking about two tails three tails if possible, four tails and so on. So let's look at those with two tails. Here is three heads, so it is not qualified. So we want three tails rather, so three heads is disqualified. Two heads, still disqualified. And then we have two heads, still disqualified. Two tails qualified, so H, T, T is qualified. Then we have two heads, no. Two tails, T, H, T, qualified, tail, head, tail. Two tails. T T H qualified and three tails T T T. So one, two, three, four. We had the number to be four. So let's see how we get the probability. But before that, check well. At least two tails means two tails will be the least. So two tails and more than two tails. So two tails will get an equal. And then more than two tails with three tails, four tails, five tails if possible. And I had two tails here. So two tails with T T T T and three tails are T T T. That is three tails. Now let's get a probability. So the probability of at least two tails will be equal to how many two tails do we have? We have one, two, three, four. So the number is equal to four. So four up here. And the total number that is a sample space becomes out of eight. That we get four cancel itself one and into eight to be two. We get one over two. So at least two tails will give us one over two. Now the last one, Ivan. 
the ivy says a head and two tails so a head and two tails now let's see from the outcome which one has a head and two tails this one has three heads wrong a head and two tails wrong this one has two two heads and a tail two heads and a tail so a head and two tails we have head tail tail qualified we have a head and two tails this one doesn't qualify we have tail head tail then a head and two tails this one tail tail head qualifies so tail tail head so the description for a head and two tails take it again a head and two tails so make sure you have a head and two tails that's one head two tails qualify one head two tails qualify one head two tails so there are three of them the number will be three so let's get the probability the probability of the head and two tails so a head and two tails the probability will be how many are they there are three of them that we got from our possible outcome so three are the numerator that is the number of outcomes that are belonging to the head and two tails category there are three of them then divided by the total before you went to select which is eight so we have three out of eight for a head and two tails thank you very much